Mm. And what are your top tips for happiness? My, oh, that's... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the... Uh, uh, first, I realize that yes, we need to improve our health conditions. We want to be you know, basically in good health, in a free society, able to have access to education, whatever makes a good life in general. But uh, if we put all our hopes and fear on the outer condition, we are for a uh, rough ride. Because in the end, it's the mind that experiences all that from morning till evening. And we have a tendency to, to, over, to neglect a little bit the inner conditions. You know, what is going... Because in the end, it's all your mind that experiences that. You could be completely depressed in a very wonderful situation, outer situation. But the mind overrides that, eclipses the good situation. Right? And there's also these things like the paradox of the happy poor. You know, it doesn't mean that uh, you know, all the poor are happy and we should be living in a slum in Kakata. But the fact that they can be, such, it shows that again the state of mind overrides the seemingly uh, very unpleasant outer condition. People are still, you know, full of joy and, and so forth. So number one will be don't underestimate. The, the importance of the inner conditions. And number two, therefore, don't underestimate the power of transformation of mind. That you can change the way you experience things, and that will change your world, because that's the, that's the world you experience. What motivated you to be happy, and is happiness always appropriate? Um, well, again, it depends what you call happiness. I think what motivates someone to become happy, you just might ask the, the same question, means what motivates you not to suffer, isn't it? Because you know, one is the flip side of the other one. So nobody willingly determines that I want to suffer as much as possible, as long as possible, and all the time in all circumstances, right? Whatever you do, you know, coming this morning, having a cup of tea, whatever, short term, long term, the idea is something Something better is going to come out of it, better than now. I will acquire something, whether it's knowledge, whether it's uh, fl flourishing, whether it's uh, whatever. You will not do that if it is going to increase your misery. Who will do that? You know, you know for sure that at the end of the tunnel there will be more suffering. So, okay, I'm not going in that tunnel. So, that is true for everyone. People say, oh, I don't care for happiness, I care for justice, social justice. Well, that's your way to, to, to achieve flourishing, is to achieving, accomplishing social justice. So you get a fulfillment. So that's happiness. You know, it's not just like happiness is like, hey, hey, I feel so happy, I'm jumping. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's a sense of fulfillment, deep sense of fulfillment, no regret. That's, that's the best way to use my time. So in that case, Whatever we do, I mean, Aristotle says the goal of goals, because whatever we do tends to achieve the fulfillment. The way we do is maybe different. But then this fulfillment is, is in itself a goal. So that's, I think, the thing. So now, in a way, well, from the Buddhist side, it is a science of happiness and suffering. It is a science of the mind. What in the mind, what are the inner conditions in the mind, like you know, malevolence, or or jealousy, or arrogance, or obsession that will undermine the quality of life, the quality of experience. What are the other ones that loving kindness and inner peace and strength that will foster your happiness? So that's the kind of thing that once we try to, to, to enhance, the other ones we try to slowly uh, dissolve. So that's the, that's the idea of, of a part of, of transformation. But first, you ask one interesting question. It's always, uh, what do you say, suitable or appropriate. appropriate? Well, again, if you think of happiness as a sort of you know, beaming, you're not going to be beaming if, if in front of a massacre. So, so, in a way, that kind of euphoric, euphoric happiness or pleasure, a feeling that this is a nice situation, is not compatible with sadness. But the, the way I, I sort of try to present happiness as a way of being, it is compatible with witnessing a massacre because you still can have an immense strength of mind and courage, compassion, determination to remedy to that. So from our perspective, this is part not of 
happiness, you know, this happy happiness, but of of, fr of flourishing, accomplishment, well-being in the sense of a, of a balance, balance way of being, because you, instead of falling into despair, you will go into, okay, what can we do, for instance, to, uh, to alleviate those suffering, to, to remove the causes that brought this massacre and injustice? So in that case, it is always appropriate. What is not appropriate is to have a big smile in those circumstances, right? Yeah. Well, for, for many people, I suppose, the, the, the emotion of happiness is sort of relative to their suffering. Um, but as does your feeling of being happy ever just become numbed because you're exposed okay, to sure. pleasure? Well, that's, that's only right. if you think of happiness yeah. and suffering in terms of pleasure and un un pleasure. Yeah. yeah. For instance, a, a state of deep serenity, but it's not a sensation, it's a state of wisdom, a state of uh, freedom, and, and like that. So there's no way it can become numb. Mm. But what can become numb, we are listening to this beautiful music when we came in. I love it. But if you have to listen for 24 hours, yeah. you become more than numb. You become just <laughs> absolutely exhausted. <laughs> or oh, a hot shower, such fantastic, but 24 hours on a hot shower, can yeah. you imagine? <laughs> that you call it. So that that's, comes from the confusion between pleasure and happiness. Again, nothing wrong with pleasure per se, yeah. but if we don't confuse it. <laughs> but in a way, <laughs> you could still say that from the Buddhist perspective, happiness is not just an endless succession of pleasurable experiences. That's more like, seems like a recipe for exhaustion. <laughs> it is a, a way of being. A way of being that means a cluster of qualities, including loving kindness, but also, you know, inner freedom from all the wandering thoughts, you know, forgotten rumination, and hope and fear, you know, strength, and, and so uh, basically a, a, a cluster of qualities that all together, uh, unlike pleasure that is uh, very vulnerable to change of outer circumstances, you know, beautiful day and so forth, then suddenly you are drenched by cold rain or whatever, you know, experience change completely. But there, instead of being vulnerable to that, it gives you the resources to deal with the ups and downs of life. So it's almost, almost the opposite. <laughs> I mean, there's no contradiction. Pleasure can contribute to happiness, but it can also, can also undermine happiness it's, it's, if it's mixed with craving and thirst and so forth. So in itself, it's just a different, a different continuum than happiness. It can help, it may, it may impeach on happiness, but definitely should not be confounded. So that's the point.